There once was a lake enclosed by mountains with lotus flowers floating in it. One day, one of these lotus flowers exploded into a pillar of fire. The god Medjurshi took his sword and struck down a mountain, emptying the lake of its water and creating the Kathmandu Valley. The first accounts of people living in the Kathmandu Valley was the dynasty of Gopalbansa, who was credited with building the Pashupinith Temple. These people were followed by the Karata people, who were mentioned in an Indian epic known as Mahabharata where their first king, Yalambar, was killed in a war where men fought amongst gods. Many Karata kings ruled the Kathmandu Valley in succession. This is until the Lichavi people were forced from their homes in India and fled to the Himalayas. The Lichavi clan now seized power from the Kirata and expanded their empire, conquering many principalities surrounding them, even getting into Tibet and North India. This expansion was halted when the dynasty broke apart into many principalities, but from these principalities arose one Sumrun dynasty, who conquered most of the Himalayan region. This dynasty built the Sumrungar fort, which would be later seized and demolished by the Thakuri people. The Thakuri people ruled for many years, and in this time they built many new cities, the most important of which was Kathmandu, which is the modern capital of Nepal. The Indian kingdom of Karnat set its sights on the small Nepali country, but found that its soldiers were outclassed in the mountainous warfare that its soldiers were not used to. Eventually, the Karnat were defeated and left the Thakuri to their own devices, after some time, a man seized power from the Thakuri and began the early Mala dynasty, which had very rough beginnings, where an earthquake killed nearly one-third of the Nepali population. This was followed by a Muslim invasion, where many Buddhists and Hindus were killed, and their temples destroyed. Following this invasion, the state was broken up into many principalities once again. A descendant of the Mala rulers began the reunification of Nepal and the late Mala dynasty. This signaled the beginning of a golden age for Nepal, but the last Mala king died and split his kingdom between his three sons. Now, south of the Himalayas, a great Indian nation was conquering territories, and many exiled fighters were fleeing to the Himalayas. Once in Nepali territory, these soldiers formed small principalities and brought with them new technologies of war, such as artillery and firearms. With the introduction of these new technologies, these principalities and kingdoms began infighting for supremacy once again. What a surprise. But, the one kingdom that showed the most prowess was the Gorkha Kingdom, who began uniting the Kathmandu Valley and began the Shah Dynasty. In one instance, one of the last remaining kingdoms of the Kathmandu Valley was attacked by the Gorkha, and they asked the British East India Company for aid. But, this kingdom had met its match and were defeated and conquered by the Gorkha. The Gorkha were both ethnocentrist and nationalist, so the unification of Nepal held great significance to them, and this nationalism also fueled their resistance to British imperialism. And once the Gorkha had united the Kathmandu Valley, they renamed their kingdom the Kingdom of Nepal. Following this unification, the Nepalese wanted to expand their empire, so they declared war on the Garhwal in North India, and over a trade dispute declared war on Tibet. The Nepalese easily defeated Tibet and forced them to be a tributary state, but the Tibetans refused to pay this tribute, so the war reignited. This time, the Qing involved themselves siding with Tibet. Now, the Nepalese were being encroached on from both sides, since they were losing to the Qing and the Garhwal nation. After a long stalemate, in efforts to refocus on their Indian campaign, the Nepalese signed a treaty with the Qing. This made the Nepalese a tributary state of the Qing, but it allowed them to refocus their troops against the Garhwal and allowed them to conquer and occupy them. The British, now with a stronger hold in India, asked the Nepalese for a trade route with Tibet, but the Nepalese refused, and this angered the British. Following this was a border dispute that led to the Anglo-Nepalese War. After some hard fighting, the English won, and the Nepalese were forced to secede some of their territory south of the Himalayas to the Indian state. But, the British enjoyed having a buffer state between them and the Chinese, so they allowed the Nepalese to be sovereign, but a British subject. This was followed by a long pro-British rule, where Nepalese troops were sent to help the British suppress the Indian Rebellion and in World War I. But, World War II was where they showed their teeth, as they were vital on the Burmese front against the Japanese. Soon, the Nepalese people were sick of their autocratic rulers, so they rebelled against them and ousted the king. They replaced this system with their own system of a parliament working alongside a king. But, as people in power do, the king, who was implemented by the people, wanted more power. So, he stripped power from the government and allowed himself to rule Nepal alone, with a cabinet of ministers at his side. Future kings became less and less strict, and eventually the people were allowed a parliamentary democracy. Later, Maoist communist revolutionaries began a civil war, and established themselves in some provinces which split the country in two. The king and his immediate family would be assessed 
assassinated by these revolutionaries, but his heir, King Gandera, would declare a state of emergency to end the civil war once and for all. And the terror caused by the king assuming total control united the democratic parties, even the communist rebels, to unite against the king and oust him. And in the first fully democratic election in Nepal, the communist party won majority. But in their efforts to form a constitution, many minorities found that they were not represented or protected, and protests ensued. A few died in clashes with police, which angered the Indian government, who began a blockade. This starved Nepal from vital resources such as gas and medicine, which hindered more than it helped. And once the clashes ceased, the blockade was lifted, but the Indian government denies ever enacting. In spite of these protests, the Nepalese people have consistently elected communist leaders into government until the present day. <laughs>